Hello friends, this video on Laws of Motion Part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched the videos from Part 1 to Part 5 before going ahead with Part 6. Now that we are clear of what is momentum, how is force related to the change in momentum, it will be convenient for us to understand the second law. The second law states that the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the applied force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts. See, the first part we have already proved, that is, the rate of change of momentum, rate of change, that is, the change of momentum with time, this is directly proportional to the applied force. And also, this force and the change in momentum, they both act in the same direction. I guess we have already proved this before in the previous slides that how force is dependent on the change in momentum. Now, here we can say that this force is directly proportional to change in momentum, which we denote as dp by dt. That means as the change in momentum increases, applied force increases. As the change in momentum decreases, the applied force decreases. So we can say force is equal to some constant dp by dt as happens in simple mathematics. Now we consider for convention that this constant k is equal to 1. We consider this constant of proportionality. This is the constant of proportionality. We consider this as 1 as per convention. So we say that force is equal to the rate of change of momentum. That is force is equal to dp by dt. The second law can alternatively be defined as or it can be stated as the relationship between an object's mass m, its acceleration a and the applied force f is f is equal to mass into acceleration. The direction of the force vector is same as the direction of the acceleration vector. So, in the previous slide, we, sh we showed you that force is proportional to dp by dt. We also showed that acceleration also varies with the change of momentum vector. Now, this alternative definition of second law states that force is equal to mass into acceleration of the body. And since this is a vector quantity, this is a vector quantity, so they both act in the same direction. So, we will get a derivation or we will try to derive this as we go ahead. Here we will derive force is equal to mass into acceleration. We already know that force is equal to the change of momentum with time that is dp by dt. We also know that momentum is nothing but mass into velocity. So we put the value of momentum in this relation. Instead of p, we put m into v. So from this we get m dv by dt. We consider mass is constant. So m dv by dt plus v dm by dt. Now since we have considered this is an assumption which we have taken that mass will remain constant. So, this value will become equal to 0. So, we get mass dv by dt. Now, what is dv by dt? dv by dt is the rate of change of velocity which is equal to acceleration. So, we get force is equal to mass into acceleration. So, now we are clear what is Newton's second law. The second law states that one statement is force is the rate of change of momentum. The second statement says force is the product of mass and acceleration of the body. Now what is the unit of force? Unit of force is kg meter per second square which is very obvious from this definition. Unit of mass is kg. Unit of acceleration is meter per second square. Also the SI unit of force which is normally used is Newton. Now we will see whether the second law is consistent with the first law of Newton or not. Now, what was the first law? The first law was only for objects which are either at rest or in uniform motion. That means moving with uniform velocity. Right? 
such that the total force, the net force is equal to zero. So first law only dealt with scenarios where the net force is equal to zero. Now second law dealt with scenarios where the net force is not equal to zero. That was taken into consideration. Now let us see if the second law is consistent with the first law. Now our second law states force is equal to mass into acceleration. Now let us suppose what if force is equal to zero. If force is equal to zero, let us suppose in the second law we put force is equal to zero, then we get zero is equal to mass into acceleration. So we get acceleration is also equal to zero. Now what do we mean when we say acceleration is equal to zero? Acceleration is equal to zero means the velocity is constant. And what do we mean when we say velocity is constant? If a body is moving with constant velocity, that means the body is, a, is in uniform motion. So what we find is the second law is consistent with the first law because the first law also says that for a body in uniform motion, just quickly recall the first law. The first law says for a body in uniform motion, the net force acting on it is zero. And we have proved the same thing using the second law. We have considered that force is equal to zero and we have arrived that the body is moving with constant velocity. So that means the second law is consistent with the first law. The second law of Newton, that is Newton's second law of motion is a vector law. What do I mean when I say vector law? The second law basically defines force, that is F, which is a vector quantity. And any vector quantity can be represented in this way, that is fx i cap plus fy j cap plus fz k cap. So any vector quantity can be represented in terms of its x, y and z components. So the second law can also be represented like this. We know that f is equal to dp by dt. So we can write it in this way that fx is equal to dpx by dt, fy is equal to dpy by dt and fz is equal to dpz by dt. So this is a vector law that means the second law holds true for each of the vector components of f. Now we'll see range of Newton's second law. Well, when Newton's second law of motion came into picture, it was defined only for point objects. Right? When initially it was, it came into the scene, it was only for point objects. That is very small objects. What do we mean by point objects? Objects whose dimensions are almost equal to zero. That means an object whose length, breadth or height, they almost approximate to zero. I mean, it is a very, very small object. But later, the Newton's second law, it was found that we can apply Newton's second law for larger bodies as well. So when we talk of larger bodies and when we say acceleration, Acceleration would mean the center of mass of the system of bodies. Let us suppose if I consider, like I will explain it to you on a large scale. Let us suppose if I talk of one ball. When I try to, whose mass is m, say m1, and say if this ball is moving with an acceleration a1. Now according to Newton's second law, the force on this ball would be mass into acceleration that is m1 a1. Now let us suppose I have a big box which has hundreds or thousands of similar balls packed this way. Now if I say that you have to consider this entire collection of balls as a system and you have to apply Newton's second law, in that case what will be the mass? Mass will become the mass of the entire system that is the total mass of this entire system will consider all the collection of the ball as one system and what will be the acceleration acceleration would be the acceleration of center of mass of the system that means maybe each of the ball is moving with some acceleration say a1 a2 a3 a4 but the acceleration of the center of mass will be treated as will be considered for the definition of newton's second law 
and the F would be, this M would be the total mass, that is the total mass of all the walls and the F would be the total external force on this system. Maybe F1, F2, let us say this on this ball it was F1. So similarly on one ball F1, the next ball F2, F3 and so on. So many forces will be there but we will consider the total net external force on this entire system. So we will consider the collection of hundreds or thousands of balls as one system. Mass will be the total mass of all the balls. Force will be the total external force on this system of particles. And acceleration would be the acceleration of center of mass of the system. Don't worry by seeing the term center of mass. We will deal with center of mass as we go into our into the chapter on rotational dynamics. There we will deal this in detail. So for now you should know that however Newton's second law was discovered only for point objects but it can be applied to even larger bodies. Another important point to note here is the relation between force F and acceleration A is local. What do we mean when we say local? Local means the force applied on a body at a particular point is always related to the acceleration produced at that particular point and that instant that is force at a particular point and at a particular instant of time is related to the acceleration at that point and at that instant for example let us suppose this is a toy car you applied a force from this end say you applied a force capital F because of which the car moved now when the car moved, let us say it moved with some acceleration, say A. So the force which you applied at this point of time is related to the acceleration which was produced at this point of time. This force has nothing to do with what was the state of motion or what was the acceleration of this car two days back. Or this force which you apply here has nothing to do with what is the acceleration of some car which is moving somewhere else. That means, so this is what we mean when we say local. Local means the point of time where the force is applied is related to the acceleration at that point of time and also the point in space where the force is applied is related to the acceleration which is produced at that space. We will now introduce a new term that is impulse. So what is impulse? Impulse is defined as a force multiplied by the time it acts over. Let us suppose you apply a force on some body which acts on the body for a time t. Then the impulse of the body is equal to F multiplied by t that is Ft. Let us take a general example. The tennis racket striking the ball. Just look at this boy. He is playing tennis. He strikes the ball with the racket. What happens? Let us suppose the racket gives a force F on the ball. Now this force F acts on the ball for a very short period of time, say T. So we say that an impulse is imparted to the ball. That means the racket gave an impulse to the ball. So what is that impulse which is given to the ball? The impulse is F into T. Now by definition of impulse, we found that impulse is equal to F into a small period of time that is delta T. We also know that F is equal to, from the second law, we know that F is also equal to delta P by delta T. So, from this we can say F into delta T is equal to delta P. Now, this is nothing but impulse. Therefore, we can say that impulse is equal to change in momentum. So we arrive at this conclusion that impulse is equal to change in momentum. Now that we have also talked about impulse, we are done with our Newton's second law. Let us start. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.